Learning objectives include reproductive spores, and I mentioned earlier that there are two kinds of reproductive spores. One are produced sexually, the other ones are asexually. In this part, we will talk about asexual spores. Asexual spores are produced by mitosis, simple cell division. And there are two major kinds of asexual spores. One is called conidiospores, and the other is sporangiospores. Conidiospores, the major difference between the two is that conidiospores are not enclosed in a sac, while sporangiospores are enclosed uh, in a sac. So these conidiospores could be unicellular or multicellular spores, while sporangiospores, they are, the major difference between them is that they have a sac around them. Let's see the conidiospores and the sporangiospores, how they look like. One of the conidiospores is called conidia. Conidia basically is a round-shaped structure. If they are arranged in chain, we call them conidia, as you can see here in this example here. The part that bears those conidia is called conidiophore. And all these small, small round structures, they're all spores. They're arranged in chains, one after the other, as you can see here clearly, as you can see them clearly. Um, one more thing that I, I must tell you is that the fungi, especially the filamentous fungi, they are identified by the morphology. So it is... This arrangement of these spores, which is very important morphologically. So they have various fungi have a particular, a specific shape and arrangement of these spores by which we can identify them. So please keep that in mind that these arrangements and spores are very important morphologically for identification of fungi. There is another conidiospore, what we call arthroconidia. Arthro mean basically is a is a kind of joint. So as you can see, these spores are produced asexually, of course, but by the fragmentation of the septa. So septa, basically, the hypha, divides and is shattered into small fragments. Each fragment acts as a spore, can regerminate as the nutrients are available or becomes available to it. It'll, it'll germinate into another thallus, mycelia, hyphae, and would bear the spores again. Coxidoides immitis is an example of a fungus that has arthroconidia. Another conidiospore is called blastoconidia. Here, the spore is produced by budding off the cell from the mother cell. You see it's here, this, this, and these are the main cells. Candida albicans basically is a yeast, and when it multiplies inside the body, these yeast cells, they attach to each other what typically looks look like hypha, but it is not. It's, it, as I defined earlier, that this is a non-filamentous, and that is the reason, although the cells as they bud off from each other, they are arranged one after the other, and they look like a hypha or a fragment, but they are not. And that is the reason the name is given to them as pseudo-hypha. It's a false hypha. But at the end, there is a budding off of the spore, which we call a blastoconidia. So candida albicans is, again, is another example. Another form of the conidia spore and remember, these spores are not enclosed in a sac. This is a chlamydoconidia. The chlamydoconidia spores are formed by enlargement or, and thickening of the mother cell. Just the, the cell enlarges and thicken in the form of a round body, which we call a chlamydoconidium. And the example, again, is a candida albicans. Candida albicans can produce a blasto, Conidia or a chlamydoconidia. Second kind of spores that are asexually produced, they are enclosed in a sac. And the name is sporangiospores. At the end of the hypha, 
there is a sac formed and within the sac a number of spores are generated and this stalk which bears that sac is called superangiophore like we saw that there was a conidiophore that bear the the, the conidiospores similarly the superangiospore has a stalk named as superangiophore and rhizopus is a typical example of superangiospores as i mentioned earlier this is the vegetative hyphae which would absorb the nutrients and then this part which is protruding from the surface or into the surface above the medium are the aerial hyphae and then they are bearing those sac like structures and within the sac like structure and closed are number of spores and when with the air currents or anything that passes or passes close to these spores these sacs are so delicate that these uh, get easily damaged and then they release these spores into the air and they can go with the air currents anywhere and that is the reason these fungi are present almost everywhere so in summary fungi reproduce by sexually as well as asexually we didn't talk about sexual spores in this lecture but we will in some other lecture so there are asexual spores have two kinds two two forms or two types conidiospores and superangiospores conidia or conidiospores are not enclosed in a sac while superangiospores are enclosed in a sac or bag like structure